Hello guys. Today I want to talk about uh, head turn uh, in 3D space in spine <clears throat> with 2D characters. So it's not actually a professional video on how exactly you need to do to approach a nice 3D turn or pseudo 3D. Okay, so rigging the face, uh, like making controller for face turn is pretty much time consuming. So before you do, actually it's better to think about how it's going to look. If you are given the freedom of creativity and you have to think about it, should you use 3D turn or no, I really suggest thinking before starting it. Sometimes you just spend a lot of time on it and do actually pretty nice 3D rig and later you just understand that character is going to be very small in the game or it's just a very secondary character that appears like once in the game or it, it's not gonna even have many animations of turning the head so one animation so maybe you could go with directly deforming meshes in, in, in animation okay so i usually do in two ways one is for uh, performance costly games like mo uh, on mostly on mobile games games where the characters are uh, presenting a lot in the scene so if the character is one in the scene it mostly on mobile you will be fine of course using mesh deforms but if there are a lot of characters in the scene and this is going to be shipped on the mobile, you definitely don't need to use any constraints, any mesh deforms, or if, if even you are using them, please warn about it, developers or clients. So it's it's really costly making additional like constraints just for some final touches. Okay, so let's start with the first one, the simpler one that I use to do very quick rig uh, that I uh, deliver one controller that actually looks pretty nice. It's not final, but it actually doesn't uh, use any constraints and uh, ITs or etc. For simple rig, I, I just create a bone and put whatever bones I have on the face inside and move it. Uh, the idea is to take the face and move it right and left without touching the backside of the head. Uh, this rig doesn't use any constraints so it's very uh, cheap performance wise and it's very quick to do so follow me I think I can do it in several minutes. Let's create a bone and give it an icon, uh, maybe a nice color. Okay, next I will just add those bones uh, and well, yeah, they are going to move in the same plane. Uh, the face will look flat, but I think it's, uh, it's worth doing this way for uh, simple characters and games that needs uh, to be optimized okay so i think i control all the bones i have uh, the next will be just binding this mesh but before binding i want to note that i removed the nose i merged it with the face since it's not going to um, move separately it's it's on the same layer as eyes and mouth so i i merged them we will be working with one face and uh, and you may notice that it's a little bit complex uh, for this simple rig maybe we can just make another one with much much simpler considering the performance so let's let's give it very quick and fast mesh uh, add some inside uh, some lines to not break the outlines um, maybe another ring inside uh, which can flow with the face and some some more 
I don't think it's going to do like much effect on the final result. So let, let's try it this way. Okay, so let's bind this bone to uh, this mesh to this and this bone. Uh, first, I will fully give control to this bone and maybe later just select this point and give full control to this part. Yeah, I think we are very close and uh, the last thing maybe some fixing here and I think adding also the head S same way, same steps um, just select this front part and give it high value I think also the, the other parts will also have the value uh, higher than the normal ok, let's see what we have we can play with this edge or maybe let's do also this one and we can see later so again this front part i'm not doing uh, very detailed just uh, to be quick i think you get the idea so this is very simple rig it shouldn't uh, be difficult to do it yourself so i th yeah that's it Let's also fix these hairs, maybe they can have a spherical effect on the head. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you can see on the preview outline window, uh, the bottom right corner it's usable it's not perfect it's not uh, near to high quality result but it's uh, it's usable and you have to remember that we just added one bone and uh, bind some mesh to it also consider that i improved the meshes and made them optimized so if you have uh, if you are doing it quickly you will definitely reduce the number of vertices on the meshes. I would want to say also that uh, I was talking about two ways of rigging, but of course there is always uh, another way without rig. You can just deform the mesh directly in the animation. Like for example, let's create a test and imagine that we don't have this bone and we just directly want to transform so we select this tool uh, it's a very nice tool it's it's basically a brush that moves vertices uh, with uh, some fade out effect i don't know how to call it uh, correctly but you get the idea so you just directly deform here and also move the bones so just in those cases when the character has like tense animation but only one animation is actually using the head uh, no need to make a rig for face for just one animation i think better to just uh, mesh it here and uh, deform the mesh uh, but remember that this is performance uh, heavy so avoid it if really the characters are going to be rendered a lot in the same screen so just suggestion okay let's move to the next one so before starting the second rig and the, i think this is the full rig that i do uh, i would like to talk about the head shape and actually the the head itself in 3d space uh, so we can see what we actually do in the spine let me switch to the photoshop okay i have a head from the top so first thing i just 
divide the head in two pieces like uh, let's assume we have a line here and uh, what we have to do is actually turn the head this way or the other way so this would be our pivot point <clears throat> so for that uh, I, we actually need to consider the the head in, in slices like uh, I don't know how to explain but so uh, slices like this uh, so the the bottom part of the slice like this part uh, would be the most affected of the bone if for example we put the bone here and we have to actually we will do there we put the controller here and we will add another con uh, con uh, controller uh, no, it's not controller, but it's a secondary bone that will move the uh, other way of, of this bone, the, exactly the opposite way. So we will have uh, two bones and the main head bone, which will be like controlling the head and these two bones actually. So the closer the slice of the head <clears throat> to this point, the more it gets affected. So we have to consider that, for example, this part should be should have like zero uh, weights for this bone and like thirty percent of this. And this part is actually uh, would be our. Let me back, switch back to the spine would be our cheek for example cheek and a little bit back to the hair so we actually need to map this whole face on the on this this head in in our mind or in the actual image okay that's it actually let's let's start the rig process uh, i hope you understand this uh, i hope it it helped you so somehow okay let's hide these bones first so they don't confuse us uh, i just select them this way and uh, left click on one of their dots and they disappear uh, there is another way to hide uh, with the hierarchy just select one bone and click right button on the dot it will hide everything and if some some bones or images were hidden it will show them so it's like a toggle or I don't know so how to explain but it's very helpful you have to try it okay so let's let's start it I, I have the nose separated here so I can uh, move it uh, differently than the face okay let me fast forward this process and so you can see the last result okay this this will be the bone for the back side it will be moving uh, reverse to this bone so for that we just need to select this bone and uh, create a constraint and add a target to this first we just click match it fix the difference between these bones the position difference and you can see like here the and after that we can just assign the value so if you are new to this constraints the higher the value the more it listens to this bone right now it will fully be controlled by this bone it's it's not parented or it's not a child of this bone but rather than it fully overrides, uh, it gets over it and it's positioned by this bone. So right now uh, we, we don't want 100%, uh, instead we want opposite, like minus 100%. I love this feature, I, it really uh, allows a lot of things in reading. So now you can see that it's actually moving opposite and you may imagine how this is the backside of the head and how it actually can work but again it's it's not, it won't give you the real 3d effect uh, doesn't work that way you you will need to separate this axis of these controllers what we do with this rig actually is just uh, 
skewing the head and not rotating in 3D. So this is the, the actual transformation that happens with the head if we do it perfectly. Uh, while in 3D you would uh, assume like rotation. I hope in next uh, updates or versions Spine will give us a opportunity to control constraints X and Y axis uh, separately and maybe um, bind them together some with the, some kind of rule so if for example x value of the bone is here and y value is like depending on this value and it grows more and more so it actually slowly but uh, getting more and more um, mix so i don't know if that makes sense but right now these constraints are not able to achieve this uh, realistic um, head rotation what we get is just uh, this skewing okay uh, let's continue by binding those meshes to these three bones and this the back side the main head bone which controls every everything in the face and the actual controller this bone will be controlled i will mark this bone as a like stop icon or i don't know how we call it so controller that uh, indicates that you don't need to move this bone you just it's like secondary it works on itself but uh, what we need from this bone is actually to bind some ver vertices to this bone so they go the opposite way okay let's start by binding them to this bone <coughs> the meshes i do first to this bone so all vertices are uh, selects uh, bound to this and later i can add uh, exactly what i which bone i want so for this for example this bone is actually should not be controlled by uh, this uh, mesh should not be controlled by this bone so i only give uh, to bind to this <clears throat> and similar to this let's bind it here and here okay okay uh, we are not going to bind mouth for now uh, i will just uh, use constraint for mouth and eyes and later we will see if we need to bind the mesh itself so let's continue <coughs> Okay, I think I'm done with the meshes. Uh, let's see what we can do with the eyes. So previously I just put those bones inside this, but it gave me a flat turning. So it, these bones and the nose itself were all on the same plane. I, I don't want to right now. So instead I will try to give them uh, constraint to and so they can be listen to this bone let's not go detailed in naming just give something so <clears throat> it can actually work again i hit much to fix the distance and as i said before the this character has a head that this part is a little bit uh, farther than nose let's see in, in photoshop and get back to this let me switch to photoshop okay so right now what i would do if character is without head and has a pretty clean head uh, i would just give 100 percent to the nose 
uh, to this slice I would give 100% value uh, to be controlled by this bone but right now since we have uh, a head and that comes a little bit uh, further we we need to give 100% uh, percent to this part and maybe some 80 or 75 to to nose the tip of the nose uh, I actually count this uh, starting from the center of the head right now you can see uh, this is the line that I divide by parts so I can see that it's it's actually close to 75 and the eyes would be some 50 or 55 and so you can see how, how much value you should give your parts of the face the vertices okay let's back let's get back to spine <clears throat> so this part will have a hundred percent and uh, eyes actually will have some 75 we we are going to create uh ah we already created sorry yeah we will give 75 percent to this eye and this eye bone and all they will be controlled by <clears throat> this controller so let's also give this 75 although sometimes i give give them uh, different uh, values so because uh, not always they are drawn in the same size in the same place you can notice that one eye is smaller than the other so to give it a nice look sometimes i just give a little bit different numbers so right now let's let's uh, hit match okay i already done it and let's give the value okay let's next go to the mouth uh, right now i'm going to just constrain the bone and uh, not touch the mouth again hit match so the difference is calculated and here you can see the number of difference and uh, for mouth Again, I'm going back to Photoshop. I think oh, 60 would, would, would work. <coughs> oh, okay, so for eyes, I, I should actually give 60 to uh, the 75 would go for tip of the nose. Uh, which I will do the next. End line of the nose as we gave these eyes a value of uh, 60 to be constrained to this bone it means that we are forced to give this edge of the nose not less than 60 it has it's on the same plane on the same uh, slice let me go back to Photoshop it's on the same slice so you can see here the eyes Oh, the nose is actually a little bit farther, but not uh, deep. So it only can give, get a, lot, uh, a little bit higher values, but not less than 60%. Okay, let's continue. To bind the nose, we, we just need to select all the vertices and start by uh, binding from the edge I think well because whatever value has edge the higher value will have the tip so we are not risking to then modify so let's start by giving it like some 60 let's uh, let's do it 60 okay and we know that the tip should be a 75 from the slice that i show in photoshop let's give it 70 or maybe we can give it some 73 so we give space for this tip and it will be 75 okay and uh, further we go from the tip actually it gets uh, closer to this value <clears throat> which which is 60 percent so let's let's give it slowly like fading 
out. Okay, we have finished the nose. We will get back to it uh, in a moment. Let's let's do the face uh, again. The the face, the forehead, the cheeks. Everything should be considered as the slices. So the farther it goes to the ear, uh, the it should lose the value of the weight. So you need to consider so when we are close to the nose and eye and mouth actually let's let's select those parts approximately i think it would be those vertices let's select those so we can paint on them Okay, I just noticed that I haven't bound it to this bone. Right now, since I have selected, I will go and save this selection uh, that I used uh, Control 1. Uh, okay, and it actually saved the selection. Right now, I need to bind this to this bone and get back our selection and start to paint using uh, selecting this bone. and. When this uh, on this drop down, you can find add tool, add mod, or whatever. So I will just adjust these values to of my brush. And uh, actually, we can even go and use this replace. I think it it actually limits. For example, if we put sixty, it will limit your brush power to sixty percent. Like whatever you do here, it won't go further than 60%. It's, it's very powerful, but I don't use much. I just wanted to show you. So right now you can go a little bit, uh, for example, let's start from 50 or and uh, um, paint the edges of this selection and go a little bit higher and <coughs> paint inside and maybe much higher and again paint the tip part of the maybe we can also paint the cheeks with the higher values so they are a little bit closer to us okay uh, then we will need to paint the other parts uh, as i said the ears will actually not be uh, weighted to this bone so let's actually uh, farther than this line nothing should be painted and uh, weighted to this bone uh, this line is actually uh, corresponds to the center of the head and the closer to this line the we lose the weights to both bones. So the, the tip of the, the base of the ear is actually shouldn't be bound to any of those two bones. Okay, let's uh, bind this bone as well so we can have access to it and start to actually paint on this side using this bone. Sorry, this hair part is should not be bound to this bone because it actually it's very far from the center of the head. Uh, rather than it's get it gets bind to this and it actually uh, should have a lot of value. Let's see. Yes.
to avoid uh, some sliding effect that head is actually sitting on the forehead so it should not go uh, slide or float over the head so you need to be careful so the value that it has here like some 46 percent the this part also should have the exact same value so to avoid uh, the sliding so right now it has 52 and definitely they will slide over it when we move it <clears throat> okay i think we are ready to start actually testing it Let's do some quick fixes here. Okay, we will have some issues with the layering ordering of this mesh <clears throat> let's let's leave it for now okay the head should also be bound to this backbone and let's bring it back let's create brand new animation test and try to move it If you are new to this mesh or to spine and you are wondering why are some what means these orange lines and how to put them so while you are making the mesh uh, actually you have the option to create them yourself to like uh, manually direct the flow of the polygons for example if you don't like uh, this polygon to be divided into these triangles you can just change it and make a custom this also affects the smoothing pattern when you smooth uh, the values of the weights it actually flows through these orange lines uh, like the values of two these vertex will not be smoothed if this gets like 100% and this zero they will just flow to this direction rather than to jump here okay this eye definitely goes too far let's a little bit reduce its constraint value we are done here uh, to not exaggerate the effect i would actually avoid uh, moving this uh, head like this way so it actually doesn't break here 
or the other thing I could actually separate this part and um, maybe use them uh, separately so this could be totally controlled by the weights okay let's let me check the final time uh, we have also some issues here uh, right now I don't want to make it perfect this character <coughs> uh, it, it doesn't have any like shadows etc so it's it's super easy so you need to consider if you are working with very polished art it will take much time and uh, if it's easy like the shape is clean it, it will take less time so you need to consider all, all those aspects before starting okay I think that's it if you have any questions uh, let me know I will think about what else I can share uh, from my works see you next time bye